Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. This is my second video on group theory. Today I'm going to talk about symmetry groups. Uh, this isn't going to be too technical, although uh, you know if I could make if I wanted to really be uh, specific about all the mathematical definitions involved in all the groups I'm going to show you it would be pretty technical. But I'll just kind of give you an overview. So anyway. Uh, just keep in mind that the math's pretty complicated, although the idea is pretty simple. But anyway, uh, so like I said, this is my second video on group theory. I think I better tell you first, remind you what a group is. So a group is just a set with a binary operator. I guess the, this time it's a kind of a solid dot, a big dot. Uh, so we call the group G comma dot, where G is just the name of the group. And dot is a binary operator. It doesn't matter what dot is. Could be addition, could be multiplication, could be uh, composition. Um, you know, it could be a number of things. But it doesn't matter as long as it satisfies these three axioms, which are written. The other thing is uh, closure is sometimes given as an axiom. Uh, it just means that if A and B are two elements of the group, that A circle B is also an element of the group. Um, um, that that's closure, but we're defining circle, you know, uh, the solid dot in this way, having that property. So anyway, so we do have closure, but we also have these three other axioms: associativity, which I'm sure you're familiar with in ordinary uh, arithmetic, ordinary addition and multiplication are associative. Um, just means you don't matter how how you group the terms when you add them or multiplying. Um, identity that just says that there's an identity element which we call uh, E, um, such that it really doesn't do anything. A circle E is E circle A is A for all A and G. And then finally, inverses for every element A of the group. You have a unique inverse, which we call A inverse, which we write as A with a scoop superscript of minus one, having the property that A circle A inverse is A inverse circle A is E. So those are the three properties of the group. And any uh, set that has these with a binary operator that has any these three um satisfies these three axioms is a group and i know that sounds very technical but uh there's a lot of uh, familiar examples of groups yesterday i talked about cyclic groups those are the simplest ones today i'm going to talk about another type of group called symmetry groups which are um also pretty simple and i'm sure you guys are all familiar with them what's the simplest kind of symmetry Mirror symmetry or bilateral symmetry. That's just the symmetry you get when you look into a mirror. And and uh, images, 2D images that look the same when you reflect them in a mirror are said to have bilateral symmetry or mirror symmetry. These are three examples here. They actually don't have to be 2D. And most animals, uh, like here they have show a husky, husky dog. Um, most animals have bilateral symmetry. We have them. Humans have them too, or at least approximate. That means if we if we put a plane through the center of our body, our left side looks almost exactly the same as the right side. So if we reflected the size of our body, they'd still look pretty much the same, not exactly the same, but close. And the same is true for a butterfly, and then you can also have more abstract images than like the one shown on the lower left. So you can think of bilaterals, and if the point I'm trying to make here, I'm not just talking about symmetry. I've already done a video on symmetry, where actually I've talked about most of this stuff I'm talking about today. But keep in mind that there's a mathematical theory behind symmetry, because, because the next theory is group theory. So there, there's actually, there's a symmetry group associated with mere symmetry, and it's just, it's a very simple group. It's a group with just two elements. So there's two elements of this group, which which I'll call B, capital B. So there's an identity element E, that's just the element that does nothing. And then there's the, um, the element that um, reflects everything about the about the central axis. In this case, it looks as, the mix of pictures look the same, but uh, it doesn't have to. There's other pictures that'll look different if you're fucked around the central axis. But the point is, you do it twice, you get back where you started. So it has a very simple algebra. You just e, e comma little r, if you like, and r squared equals e. That's the algebra. And then you can do more complicated figures. Uh, these figures, uh, you don't have to have just one axis of symmetry. 
you can have more than one. A square, a rectangle, and a rhombus, but all, well, the rectangle and the rhombus are the simplest of these. These, these, these have what are called the Klein-4 symmetry group. They have two axes of symmetry, two perpendicular, perpendicular axes, uh, one horizontal, one vertical. And when you uh, combine those two symmetries, you get a bigger group. You get a group of order four, which is known as the Klein-4 group, usually written uh, with a letter V, 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 sometimes people write V4. Um, and then the square has an even bigger symmetry group. The square not only has, it actually has four axes of symmetry. And it turns out that the uh, there are eight uh, symmetries of a square. You can, you can also rotate it 90 degrees. So not only can you reflect it about any of these four axes, but you can also rotate the square by any multiple of 90 degrees. And when you combine all of those operations, you get a group of order eight, which people like to write as D4, the dihedral group. Um, sometimes people even write as D8. I prefer D4. But um, anyway, that, that's the symmetry group of a square. And uh, and not just, you don't have to have just geometric figures with symmetry. You can have letters. Each letter of the alphabet has a symmetry. Some of them have no symmetry. Notice some of these letters that you don't see any lines through them, like Q. A Q has no symmetry. R doesn't either. Um, uh, but all the ones with lines shown, those are uh, um, li lines of symmetry. If you reflected these letters uh, about the lines shown, they would look the same. Uh, a few of them have symmetries that are not involve mirror symmetries. L look at the S. The S, uh, even though it doesn't have any mirror symmetry, it looks the same if you rotate it 180 degrees. That's what's called a... Um, a rotational symmetry, 180 or twofold rotational symmetry. So that's a different kind of symmetry. But all of these symmetries form groups. Uh, and like I said, uh, the bilateral symmetry group is probably the simplest symmetry group. Uh, but then there's also, uh, uh, and, and I already described what the, the group is for, for uh, rotating a figure. That's a cyclic group. So in the case of uh, S, it's just a cyclic group of order two. So if you rotate 180 degrees, that's one operation. You do it twice, you obviously get back to where you started. Uh, and you can you can rotate by other multiple. You know, you have more than twofold. You have here, these are examples of a higher order rotational symmetries. Uh, uh, let's just go through them all. The the picture on top, I forget the name of these flowers, but the pic the flower on top. It has three petals, and it's, uh, it looks almost exactly the same if you rotate it 120 degrees. That's what's known as threefold rotational symmetry. And if you want to um, call one 120-degree rotation R, then R cubed is equal to E because you rotate uh, 120 degrees three times, you get a 360-degree rotation or full rotation. So the a group algebra in this case for the... Uh, uh, picture on the left is uh, is uh, R, uh, the generator is R and R cubed equals E, and the group associated with symmetry is uh, C3, the cyclic group of order 3. In general, the group associated with an n-fold uh, rotational symmetry is Cn, cyclic group of order n. So if you look at the picture in the middle, uh, this one looks the same. This is a baby starfish. This baby starfish looks the same if you rotate it. 90 degrees, multiples of 90 degrees, so that's C4. Uh, the starfish on the right, upper right has five, five uh, arms, uh, um, and if you rotate it at 72 degrees, it looks the same, so that's what five-fold symmetry, C5. And you can see how the other ones work. Actually, I should point out that I, I lied a little bit because these first four pictures, actually every picture except the one on the bottom right, they also have mirror symmetries. So actually, they're D3. You know, the first one's D3 because it has mirror symmetries about each of its petal, each axis going through any of the petals. Um, same true the starfishes and the flowers on the lower left. These are uh, C D8, I guess. So you'd have D3, D4, D5, D8. The picture on the bottom middle, or these are different uh, representations of the molecule benzene that has uh, um, um, symmetry D6. The picture on the lower right, though, it doesn't have mirror symmetry. This is the yin and yang symbol. If you ignore the colors, 
then this one has twofold symmetry. You know, it's a C two. Uh, so anyway, those are those are examples of of rotational symmetries. Uh, also, you can combine them with mirror symmetry. When, by the way, when you combine a group that has a, a mirror symmetry and rotational symmetry, that group is called the dihedral group, written as dn instead of cn. So you either get a cyclic group if you just have just rotational symmetries. You have dihedral group if you have rotational and mirror symmetries. And, and they, they don't have to be finite groups. Consider a circle. So a circle has complete rotational symmetry. That means if you rotate by any angle you want, any angle from zero to 360 degrees, you can even go more than 360 degrees if you want, but that's just the same as rotating by an angle between zero and 360 degrees. You can always reduce it. And uh, you can show that the, um, the set of rotations, arbitrary rotations uh, of a circle about its center is also uh, a symmetry group, but it's an infinite symmetry group. It's an infinite rotational symmetry group. Uh, and uh, it also, a circle has even more symmetry, has radial symmetry, which is really just, you know, a mirror symmetry about any axis through the center. So actually a circle, it turns out, has the most possible symmetries of any 2D figure. Uh, uh, it has infinitely many, but... Uh, not only that, a continuum of uh, symmetry. So, and then you don't you don't have to st uh, stop at two dimensions. You can go to three dimensions, and if you go to three dimensions, you get the you know examples the five platonic solids. Each of these five platonic solids, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with them: tetrahedron, hexahedron, also known as a cube, uh, octahedron, dodecahedron, icosahedron. Uh, all of these. Uh, three-dimensional figures has a rotational symmetry associated with it as well as mirror symmetries and each has a symmetry group associated but with a 3d symmetry groups and uh, uh, they're pretty complicated groups I'm not going to describe the groups in detail uh, it turns out there's actually only three groups associated with five platonic solids because they they you know the tetra well the tetrahedron is unique this this one has a, a symmetry group that's uh, called A4, the alternating group on four letters. It turns out that it's also isomorphic to a permutation group. I'm not going to go into those today, but uh, uh, it's a group of order 12. And uh, uh, what's next? The cube. The cube has symmetry group isomorphic to S4. That's the symmetric group on four letters. As if you like, it's it's the group of permutations of four letters. Any any way you can mix up four letters, um, say A B C D, or if you prefer numbers one two three four, you know, yeah three one two four. That's a permutation three four two one. I said I wasn't going to talk about permutations, but I am. But it turns out that the the that that's a group. Permutations form a group. And the group of permutations of four letters, that's called S4, uh, the symmetric group on four letters. That also turns out to be the isomorphic to the, uh, the symmetry group of a cube. And it turns out that the cube isn't unique with that symmetry. The octahedron has the same symmetry group. Um, uh, actually, I think I lied a little bit. It's just the rotations that is S4. There's also reflections. That gives you an even bigger group. A group of order 48. It's called the octahedral group. Uh, it's a pretty complicated group. And then the last two, the icosahedron and the dodecahedron, actually this is a uh, symmetry group. Uh, this is S5. That I know. Uh, the complete symmetry group of the icosahedron and the dodecahedron is, is isomorphic to the symmetry group on five letters, uh, S5. Turns out that's also uh, an example of a simple group. I'm not going to go on the simple groups today. Uh, it's kind of the smallest, smallest non-trivial simple group, except for cyclic groups of prime order. Uh, if that if that's if that's too much, don't don't worry about. It. But anyway, uh, and then uh, you know, like the circle has the maximal symmetry of any uh, two-dimensional figure, a sphere has a maximal symmetry of any three-dimensional figure. This is an even bigger group than the circle group. The circle group, it has a name. It's called U1. Uh, 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 
the unitary group of one dimension uh, or the orthogonal group of one dimension. It turns out that the symmetry group of a sphere is uh, S, SU2. It's uh, isomorphic to the uh, special unitary group of dimension two. It is a group, and that's all I'll say. And they, you can define an arbitrary element, an arbitrary rotation in, uh, of a sphere by these three angles that are called Eudel angles. This diagram looks a little complicated. Uh, maybe, maybe I can make it a little more uh, interesting by giving you a, a useful application, and that's in the, uh, navigating an airplane. Um, for any of you guys who uh, know anything about aerodynamics, yeah, you probably know that there's three degrees of freedom of rotation of an aircraft. They're known as roll, pitch, and yaw. They're really the same angles. These are the three oil angles. Uh, they're just given different names in terms of aerodynamics. I'm not sure why. But there are three angles, and you can you can do any 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 kind of maneuver you can do in an airplane is a is a combination of roll, pitch, and yaw. So they're useful in in navigation. And I have taken flying lessons. Uh, I do. I at one point I knew how to fly an airplane. I haven't done it for several years, so I probably can't fly anymore. But it was a lot of fun. I took flying lessons for two years, and I almost got all the way through them. Uh, I got to the point where I could fly between Palomar Airport and uh, and uh, the Ramon Airport, about 20 miles away, on my own. My my uh, flight instructor didn't even have to tell me to do everything. I did everything, including the radio, including landing. It wasn't easy, but I learned how to do all that. So I almost got to the point where I could have been a pilot. But um, I guess I had other things happening where I couldn't finish, but... Anyway, enough of that. Flying's a lot of fun. If you guys ever get a chance to learn how to fly, I really recommend it. It is expensive, though, but I think it's great. I'm glad I did it. And uh, anyway, uh, and then uh, there's another type of symmetry known as translational symmetry. Uh, uh, and if you if, if you include translational symmetries, which is the symmetries you get from shifting a figure, these are infinite symmetries, by the way. Uh, if you if you have if you combine a single translational symmetry with uh, the other two D symmetries I talked about, you get these seven freeze patterns. It turns out there's only seven. And if you combine two um, orthogonal um, um, translational symmetries with the other symmetries I talked about, there's also something called a glide reflection symmetry. I'm not going to get it. That's kind of a complicated symmetry. It's a symmetry that's a combination of a translational symmetry and a, and a reflection symmetry. But if you combine all of those symmetries yeah, in two dimensions, you get these 17 groups that are called wallpaper groups. And it turns out that these are all the different types of wallpaper you can make. There's exactly 17 symmetry groups associated with wallpaper and they all are groups so they all satisfy the group axioms i showed you at the beginning and you don't have to stop in two dimensions you can go to three dimensions here's where things get really complicated if you do the same thing in three dimensions combine all the symmetries i talked about translational rotational reflection it turns out that the the finite um, 3D uh, groups you get, well, they're not finite, but uh, uh, these are what are known as the crystallographic symmetry groups, or also called the space groups. It turns out there's 230 of them, and they're all shown on this slide. And it turns out that every crystal in nature, every, every crystal you can make, uh, is an example of one of these 230 space groups. So they are useful, too. Anyway, I think that's all I have to talk about today. That completes my talk. Thank you for watching. Long live math. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.